The homecoming for D'Lo, Bees, and Vando saw the Lake Show take care of business dominantly in the second half. After both Vando and Anthony Davis suffered mid-game injuries, which would have forced the majority of players to sit out, as D'Lo alluded to post-game, there's nothing anyone can say about the Lakers' toughness. Vanderbilt's patented hustle was on full display, whether he was peel switching, top locking, chasing around shooters, maintaining the proper balance and footing in isos, hustling for loose balls on the floor, disrupting the passing lanes, tapping out seemingly untouchable boards, or getting put back dunks. Jared locked up Ant, holding Edwards to 4 for 16 from the field when he was guarding him. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Bro, what are you talking about, man? I'm out, man. I'm Offensively, the Vandalorian used his unorthodox shooting release and underrated ability to move without the basketball to execute timely plays. Coming out of the half, LA would outscore Minnesota 35 to 18 in quarter number three. Extended. Uh film session at halftime, showed a couple extra clips, talked through some different scenarios and situations. All got on the same page and um, really wanted to make a focus of keeping them in front of us. You know, I thought we were a little loose at the first half with some of our closeouts. I mean, we did a much, much better job in that department in the second half. And hats off to Vando. Did, we were blitzing them, double teaming Anthony Edwards, but that's not an easy cover by any stretch of the imagination. So Vando being locked in, understanding, forcing them to the screen, forcing them to the double. In addition to going in depth on all of that, we'll also break down the reason for why this is such a shocking stretch of basketball for Los Angeles, and look at every merciless reason for why Darvin going ham's newest rotation is definitively first class. Before that, under 10% of you watching right now are subscribed, so please subscribe, also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. With everyone whipping out the ice in their veins, D'Lo, Selly, the Lakers have fittingly taken over as D Flo's main team. Based off how things were looking worrisome before GM Rob Palinka's insane roster overhaul, I wouldn't have believed you if you told me a few months ago that I'd be covering this team. This was a clip of the Lakers' scrimmage before they made all the moves to acquire Rui, Vando, D Lo, and Bees. And you can just tell that with God rest his soul, Pat Beverly, among other members of new organizations running the show, things were fairly stagnant and the pace of play wasn't at its best either. But since February 9th when an eight player three team trade took place, across 22 games, so over a quarter of the season, the Lake Show owned the seventh best record across the association at 14 wins and eight losses. Most notably, the addition of the man being dubbed as the Dennis Rodman of this era, Jared Vanderbilt, among D'Lo and B's being underrated defensively, LA is number one in defensive rating. Vando's not just IQ and versatility, which helped make him elite on the court, but his willingness to improve the Lakers' marketability off of it has helped the Lakers' locker room keep the vibes at a maximum level. Jared said post-game against Minnesota, quote, we are so deep, and right now, we're just doing it off of talent. So once we actually get into rhythm and get some more chemistry, it's only up from there, end quote. Prior to the matchup in Minnesota, LeBron tweeted that he wasn't paying for the $5 per month Twitter checkmark that Elon Musk is introducing, proving Just a regular, everyday, normal guy Nothing special about me, motherfucker the lack of the toxic the ego has been truly the inspirational and been the big the part of the team vibes. It's the awe-inspiring how LeBron denied professional treatment on his left foot, instead going to the LeBron James of Lafitte, who approved his return. Even LeBron's biggest hater and Skip Bayless just admitted he's the GOAT because of that. <sighs> That's it. I finally decided. LeBron James is the GOAT! <sighs> LA's most recent win in Minneapolis was mind-boggling because they still pulled it off on a rough night shooting the basketball from LBJ. While LeBron did help seal it with a dagger down the stretch, 
What also made this Laker win impressive was that D'Angelo Russell also had a rough shooting night. But they don't need D loading to be the high volume shot chucker that Westbrook was, and D Lo didn't force it, shooting a decent 5 for 12 from the field and racking up 10 dimes. It's hard to believe LA still doesn't have the only pure center on the roster available in best friend of Austin Rivers, Mo Bamba. Meanwhile, during his on-court interview with the GOAT Mike Trudell, when asked what it meant to receive a tribute video from his former team in his old home gym, D'Lo said, I'm a Lakers fan, Mikey! The fact that Los Angeles poured it on in Minneapolis like they did with the chosen one from Akron, Ohio, King James, shooting just 7 for 19 from the field, speaks to the depth, focus, and heart from the rest of the roster. To be fair, LeBron's communication with his teammates, huddling them together when need be, was still on point, despite it being a rough night efficiency-wise, but maybe officially taking over as the top dog is the man we'll heavily break down in a minute in LeBrow Anthony Davis. First to shine light on a couple role players who continue to not merely make things tick, but make things easy and firstly, a man we haven't broken down a ton in my previous Laker uploads, Malik Beasley. He's a great coach. He, he wants me to shoot the ball every time. Same with LeBron AD, and he's got to keep pushing. Malik, we've talked for a few years now. I know you want to be you want to be in a winning situation, have a prominent role. Now that you see this Laker squad with the new assembled guys here, what are you guys capable of accomplishing this season? Uh, championship. And right now, we're not trying to be in a uh, play in, we're trying to be in a, a six seed or fifth seed. So. He's been the beneficiary of, as I mentioned a couple days ago, a more intricate offensive Darvin Ham run system than we give it credit to be. AD falls down on the left wing in what should be a Spain pick and roll with D Lo. Malik's forced to read and react swiftly, doing just that by popping out to the top of the key. With Wenyan Gabriel dishing from the right wing and two off-ball screens occurring simultaneously, LeBron's monstrous big body pins McLaughlin, Beasley uses the wide flare screen from LeBron on the weak side, drifting back, gathering, and letting fly of the deep range bomb. Off the pine in limited playing time, Malik helped set the tone with that shot making. He also grabbed a couple boards in the opening frame ultimately finishing the game with 9 points and 6 boards in a limited 10 minutes played. Before getting to AD, wanted to also give a shout out to Rui Hachimura as well, whose wing defense evidently had an impact, with this man finishing as a game high plus 20. Rui's Kawhi archetype gives this Darvin Ham coached group some damn stable insurance on the perimeter. Stopping wing players becomes an increasingly obvious necessity come playoff time, and Hachimura fits the mold of being able to do so. Best part about Rui is that he can also guard centers with his strength, as he showed off against Rudy Gobert on a few possessions. We talked about D'Lo coming full circle with the Lakers over a half a decade plus a couple videos ago, but another role player in Lonnie Walker has come full circle within the confines of a single season. Walker was a 30 plus minute per night guy early in the year, but has seen his playing time steadily dwindle to the point where he's now essentially out of the rotation entirely. But you just can't doubt the Skywalker's silky smooth scoring bag to come through for at least one or two games every now and then. For example, in a pretty much must-win game a few nights ago against the Oklahoma City Thunder, Lonnie stayed ready for when his number was called by dropping 20 points and knocking down four of his eight triples. Quick shout out to Wenyan Gabriel, who in Minnesota was crucial on the O Glass. Before the AD breakdown, a few honorable mentions to the German phenom Dennis Schroeder for fouling out Mike Conley, who was going off early but was then shut down. Secondly, wanted to note this was a very well officiated game, despite the controversial Scott Foster being there. Good job to Brent Barnicky, Matt Myers, and of course the GOAT, Scotty F. Last but not least, AR 15 dropped 15 points and was a game's second best only behind Rui of plus 14. Don't forget a few other capable wing players in the under talked about 27 year old 5 year pro Devon Reed who they got from the Nuggets and the 20 year old glue guy who they drafted out of Michigan State in the well composed Max Christie. The product of Kentucky Anthony Davis just capped off March by posting his 6th 35 plus point performance of the month 
That's the second most amount of 35 plus point games over that span, only behind lead MVP candidate Joel Embiid. You could argue that right behind Embiid, AD's right now the best two-way big man across the association. Benefiting off the multi-dimensional spacing in the offense, whether AD's the dribble handoff roll man, your typical weak side pick and roll guy in the dunker spot, a whirling dervish or head down slasher in isos, the pick and pop guy drifting out to the perimeter, or Wilt Davis in the post, his strides to fill out the lane, combined with his George Russell-esque non-stop motor within a possession, have led to his ability to keep the defense guessing. That same motor shows up with his rim protection, either roaming on the backside in the half court, or pulling off miraculous chase downs to fly back in transition defensively. The toughness though from AD to fight through all of a finger injury, a dirty elbow to the groin from Kobe White, and now this most recent ankle sprain has been most shocking to see from the brow. What's been the most shocking part about the brow though in your opinion? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout. The two shoutouts from my last upload and this one are on your screen and peace.